So this is Mika's father, Micah's father. The case just seems to get more and more frustrating and more and more confusing. As of right now, allegedly, Micah had made a phone call to 911 to tell them where her body would be found after her unaliving at a local park. I was questioning the validity of that because I thought her body was found in water. I thought to myself, if somebody was to commit such an act but wanted their body to be found, you would think that they would leave their body in a place that's easy to be found. Some of you might be familiar with the Robbie Harvey on TikTok, but he released a great video talking about the fisherman and where he found Micah's body, and things just seem a little fishy. The fisherman who heard Micah Miller crying, and then heard a shot, and then found her belongings, has given a News Nation reporter a tour of the scene. And to be honest, it raises more questions than answers. Right about here, that's when I heard the gunshot. The gunshot went off. This is the fisherman who was at the park the day that Micah committed her unaliving, allegedly. He claimed to have heard crying, followed by a gunshot, and then silence. Later comes to find out he also found some belongings that were not his, and what he does with the belongings is questionable. From which side? Over here on the left? To the left. That's why I heard the, uh, the gunshot. In there? Uh-huh. That's when the crying stopped. That looks totally different from when I came in here. Anyway. Is it, is it, was it? Real quick, I want you to also focus that he just keeps saying gunshot. Singular shot. Gunshot. That's where I heard the gunshot and then the crying stopped. Gunshot. This is coming directly from the fisherman. From which side? Over here on the left? To the left. That's where I heard the, uh, the gunshot. In there. Uh-huh. That's when the crying stopped. That looks totally different from when I came in here. Anyway. Is it, is it, was it low water when, when you were here? No, it was le actually less water than what's in here now. So with that being said, maybe if she was in the water, she still would have been easily found. But let's keep watching. How did you come across her stuff, her belongings? I just seen it laying up on the bank when I pulled up, up, in, up here. in here. Yes, sir. It was laying up on the bank. I don't know why I grabbed it. I just grabbed it. Didn't ever look at it or nothing. I got out and I looked around because there was a clearing on the left and the right and I looked around because I felt like something was wrong, but I never seen nothing. I took the stuff, put it in my boat, went back to the landing. If this fisherman claims to be out fishing, here's crying followed by a singular gunshot and then quiet and then comes the long belongings left on the embankment that don't belong to him he doesn't see the owner but then takes it with him wouldn't you wouldn't you just like stop and think for a second and be like hmm maybe i shouldn't touch this maybe it doesn't belong to me maybe maybe even if this wasn't the person that was crying it could belong to maybe another fisherman who was out i don't know i just feel like i i wouldn't touch someone's stuff let alone bring it with me having been there at the at the the site where this happened ashley I gotta say, the only thing I could think of was like, how in the world did she get back in there? And after talking with her family, knowing that she had to walk through waist deep water to get there, you can only wonder, like, why? Even though apparently the water levels were lower than what they were when Mika was found, Mika, sorry, sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Mika is stuck in my head now, Mika. She still had to wade through waist high water to get to where her body was located. So that doesn't sound like you want to be easily found, right? Also, I just want to point out $500 and a Bible on her. I, I, I get your body wanting to be found, but why would you leave cash on you? Because most likely your family are not going to be the ones to first stumble upon your deceased body, possibly to even like go through the pockets and see if there was an ID. Again, I don't know how much thought really goes into this, but I would think that someone would probably go through my pockets if they found me and the chances of someone not taking that $500, in which case the family would really probably need at this point to arrange a funeral and a wake and just the expenses of not having another uh, parent in the home. But even if it was a step parent, that's very odd to me to carry a whole, how many people are gonna go unalive themselves but grab a whole bunch of money before doing so? What it, what it more so sounds like is an escape plan, right? 
She's already gone to the pawn shop. We discussed in prior videos that uh, her father even said that Micah knew how to use firearms. Um, and she had called him a, pro a couple days before her death, uh, expressing to him that she wanted to get a firearm for her protection. So it sounds more like she's grabbing some cash and protection uh, to maybe get away for a little while. I can't, I just, I can't, logically, I can't come up with another reason at the moment why you would carry that much cash with you, uh, if you are preparing to do what she is supposedly did. Bullshit. Why would she go to these lengths to get into that area? Now, I have to tell you, I've avoided talking about the fisherman because I truly believe he's innocent. But what he says doesn't make sense. Take a look at this video posted by Kyler Marlowe, who has done a fantastic job covering this case. This is where Micah Miller's body was found. And where the fisherman found her belongings, that's about 40 yards away. Now, according to Marlowe and the News Nation reporter, getting to this spot is extremely difficult. We're gonna take a really quick look at the uh, parking lot where Micah's car was found, and then we're also gonna take a look at where her body was found. After a phone call was made to 911 saying, this is what I'm gonna do, I want you to find me. Okay, just keep that in mind. She wants to be found. This is Lumber River State Park. And here's the parking lot in which Micah Miller allegedly made the 911 call, which many assume was from inside of her car. She gets out and then hikes to a part of the park that's restricted to visitors. She goes on a hike to a restricted area and you're gonna tell me that she wanted her body to be easily found? Do I look stupid? Wading through water, some say around waist deep, this is where Micah supposedly took her own life. But remember the 911 call. Micah says she just wants her family to know where she is. I'm about to myself, and I just want my family to know where to find me. I can't say for certainty, but I just imagine making what would be my last phone call. It's, it's almost like a last goodbye to your kids. You would think that there would be a lot more emotion behind it. She just seems very, whether she's depressed or not, I feel like you would hear her voice at least breaking up. It just seems very monotone, very, very of fact. Of fact. Um, they couldn't even track her cell phone after. I personally believe it didn't even come from her, did not come from her cell phone. Here's the other thing too, and even someone comments, we, we had learned about that already in a previous video, but I wish, I wish I knew how fresh the bruises were when her body was found. Oh, I heard crying, and then I heard a gunshot, and then there was silence. If there was any signs of a struggle there, you definitely would have heard it, especially going on in the water. We're going to take a look at some of the surveillance footage in an upcoming video as well. But even in the surveillance video, I believe she was wearing a long sleeve. So I couldn't see any bruising on that video already. But I want to know when she passed away, how uh, fresh were those bruises? Or were they like turning yellow and purple and starting to heal already? Then remember this. According to the family, there were multiple shell casings found, along with a live round. The park ranger um, took us back to the scene and pointed out, here's where she uh, would have been standing, here's where the shell casings and this, the live round. So now I'm really confused because now we have this porter saying that, again, they were, they were given basically a tour by the park rangers saying, this is where Miko was standing and this is where the more than one shell was found. Also to point out, here's where the shell casings were, and here's where even a live round were. How can you do that if she was in water? How do you know? Okay, you could point over and be like, oh, she was standing about there. But if she's in the water, firearm goes off, the casings, they're, they're light once they're empty. They're gonna 
float don't don't they float aren't they just made of like maybe an, an aluminum or something I believe they would float first of all so they would have moved if they were in the water they wouldn't have just been on the ground because she was waist deep in water right so how did a park ranger say oh that's where the casings were that's where she was standing it sounds more like she was on land then and also if there's multiple empty shells there would have been more than one gunshot heard so you're telling me that this fisherman heard crying one gunshot and then silence and that was it but there but there's evidence of multiple rounds being fired right uh were which also doesn't make sense um she knew how to use a weapon she got the weapon for self-protection she told me days beforehand you know dad i really feel like i need a weapon for protection and oh wait a minute Wait a minute, that's his, that's her dad. Park ranger um, took us back to the scene and pointed out, here's where she uh, would have been standing. Here's where the shell casings and the, the live round uh, were, which also doesn't make sense. Um, she knew how to use a weapon. She got the weapon for self-protection. She told me days beforehand, you know, dad, I really feel like I need a weapon for protection. She's not gonna charge the weapon and eject a live round she already knows the first rule of, oh, of gun so you know, use is knowing the condition of the gun <gasps> so this is mika's father micah's father this is micah's father micah was trained in firearms she wouldn't just eject a live round by mistake but what could happen let's say you were maybe struggling over the gun or there was some sort of altercation where you were trying to struggle and get it from somebody or someone was trying to get it from you and things could have gotten ejected or like couple shots fired and then ejected or maybe a couple shots were fired and then she ejected it to get the rest of the bullet. If somebody is going to unalive themselves, especially somebody who is trained in the weapon, I don't think they're going to miss. Even if she did miss hypothetically, how could you then fire at least one more round and also eject a live round? If, if you know, if the way that I'm thinking of unaliving yourself with a firearm happened in this case, I'm I'm think I'm playing it out in my head, like you pull the trigger, there's no reaction time. Like would you be able to accidentally eject? Like I don't feel I don't feel like it's easy or you can accidentally eject your bullet. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's that's a really fascinating piece of information. But I have to be honest, the fisherman's interview has simply made things more confusing. And part of the reason why I've probably decided to dig deeper is because last week, John Paul Miller's own father disputed what police have said. Remember, police say John Paul Miller was nowhere near the scene. He was with a woman he's allegedly in a romantic relationship with. But John Paul Miller's father, in a statement sent in to the Daily Mail, says he wasn't with a woman that day. And on Friday, the Daily Mail approached Susie Skinner, the alleged mistress of John Paul Miller. Susie told the Daily Mail she's not dating John Paul, and they're just friends. Just friends, yeah. Okay. We talked a little bit about JP's father and how he might have a sketchy past, but the fact that he's even uh, rebuttaling what his, his son is saying is his alibi or who he was with the day that Micah passed away. There was a really great video here on YouTube going over Micah's surveillance from the pawn shop and the gas station, and it looks like there might be a black truck following her. We know from reports that JP himself did not tend to follow his wife, but may have hired hired um, other people to do so. I know it's a lot. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, please go ahead, show me by leaving a like. Also, if you want to give me a chance, hit that subscribe button, and I hope to see you in my next one.